The president, whose country holds the rotating presidency of the European Union, provoked equal measures of uproar and delight after he accused the EU and its institutions of being undemocratic and elitist. The president's speech comes the day after the Czech Parliament's lower house approved the EU's Lisbon Treaty. That was welcomed by the country's prime minister, but today the president said the treaty would reduce democracy in Europe. Eurosceptics and opponents of further European integration were delighted that around 40 MEPs from the Parliament's main political groups walked out of the chamber in protest. In a normal parliamentary system, some of the MPs support the government and some support the opposition. In the European Parliament, if I'm not mistaken, this arrangement has been missing. Here there's one single alternative and those who dare think about a different option are labelled as enemies of European integration. Well, I'm joined now by two members of the Parliament who are in the chamber during the Czech President's speech. We have uh, Glyn Ford, Labour MEP from Britain, and uh, Nigel Farage, leader of the UK Independence Party. Glyn, uh, you were in the chamber, at least for part of the speech. You walked out. Wasn't that playing into the hands of uh, the President? No, I don't think so. I think he was abusing the Parliament. I'm very happy to have a debate with the President or anybody else over the issue. But, of course, it was a formal setting where there's no good debate. If he wants to come and debate us, fine, come and debate us, but don't abuse the Parliament by coming and lecturing to us in exactly the same way the Russians used to lecture to the Czechs <laughs> when they were in control. Oh, dear, 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 dear. What was delicious was it was just at the moment when President Klaus was saying that just like previous Soviet regimes, the status quo and the European elite are not prepared to listen to any alternative view and take anybody that gives a different interpretation of the way things should go as being enemies of the European Union was the moment at which you walked no, no, out. No, I thought it was, said, it was delightful. He said, he, said it was delightful. What, he said what he wanted was a debate when he actually knows he's rejected having a debate no. because he came here on a formal session no, rather than debate. No, I'm no, like uh, and, let, and let me tell you why. Because the European Parliament refused to allow him a debate, all they would give him was a formal uh, session. He represents the, the Czech yes, president. Yes, I was he there can in the come along any time no, he wants no, to have I'm a debate. That's okay, well, let's true. talk about the substance of what he was talking about as mm. well. I mean, he, he is going to be uh, asked to sign uh, uh, the Lisbon Treaty uh, ratification if the Senate goes yeah. ahead with this. I mean, he was, wasn't he, Nigel, um, using the opportunity to express his dissatisfaction with the fact that uh, earlier in the week the uh, lower house and the Czech uh, uh, parliament said yes well, to the Lisbon that's Treaty. Part of it. No, I mean, that's part of it, but, oh. he, but he is opposed, he is opposed, and has been for many years, he is opposed in principle to the idea that nation states give away the ability to make their own decisions. He wants a Europe based on trade and cooperation. Just the same kind of Europe that I want, but what was refreshing, it's the first time in ten years that I've been able to stand up and share. And that is true, Glenn. You never hear a head of state or government in that chamber uh, really uh, disseminating any view well, I mean, apart it's, it's from the, the, the usual. Well, it's up to the Czechs what they do about it, but a clear majority in the Czech lower house voted in favour of the Lisbon Treaty. This is a man who actually clearly opposes what, uh, if you want the lower house, and it looks like the upper house does. I mean, I don't know where he stands. No, his point was this, though. His point was this, that the Irish said no, the French said no, and the Dutch said no, and that the EU... And that the EU and that the EU is behaving very badly in ignoring those referendum results. It's a perfectly valid point. No, no, I disagree. I mean, he's a well, man who actually Irish no longer, well, let's he no why longer represents... I mean, he he's not, doesn't deal with the Irish. He no longer represents the majority viewpoint of the people of the, of the Czech Republic or the Czech lower house, and I suspect the upper house. Well, we'll uh, see. Uh, well, we, we'll we see. will see. And I presume you're in favour with me that if he can't support that, he should resign. If the upper house in the Czech, in, 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 in the Czech parliament approves the treaty, that I think he'll probably have no option constitutionally but to append his signature. What was very interesting, Nigel, though, as well, is although he was critical of uh, the, the EU's political elite, he did say again and again that he saw no alternative but EU membership. What he and said, that's very different well, from no, you, isn't No, no, no. It? What he said was, he was very careful how he said it, there was no alternative to EU membership for the Czech Republic. And he emphasised that very, very clearly indeed. It's a very well-known fact that when Margaret Thatcher recently had this big dinner to celebrate the 20th anniversary of her Bruges speech, he was the guest speaker and he made it perfectly clear that countries like Britain have other options. To find out more about who we are and what we stand for, go to the UK Independence Party website at www.ukip.org.